Right, I've just got this excellent selection of tools here from Banggood, and this is under the listing, the Matchyfit No Power Spindle Assembly Small Lathe Accessories. So on the listing you have four different sets to actually choose from. They all share the same component, except for the chuck sizes and obviously the chuck key. And also on the same listing, there's the option of actually buying the drive pulley and the rubber drive bell. And that one can be used to drive all these different sets. So like I say, the spanners, the actual bearings and um, most of the assemblies are exactly the same for each set. Like I say, the chuck sizes are different and also the spindle uh, that actually goes into the back of the chuck is obviously different for each one. But the only difference of that spindle is the actual tapered part at the back here or at the front that goes into the back of the chuck. The spindle diameter is still exactly the same for each set so they're completely interchangeable. So the chuck sizes are um, JTO and this is a 0-3mm chuck. Then you have a B10 which is a 0.6-6mm diameter chuck. Then you have the B12 which is a 1.5mm to 10mm um, chuck. And then the B16 which is a 1.5mm to 13mm chuck. So if you're new to engineering, JTO, B10, B12 and B16 refers to the actual taper in the back of the chuck and also the taper that fits into the back of the chuck on the actual spindle. And just for reference, this is the JTO one and this is the B16 taper. You can see the completely different sizes of those tapers. And you can choose from all these different fabulous sets to make all different types of um, engineering projects on the site. At the moment um, they're on special offer with 65% off so um, that's a great saving. And you can actually get like DC motors like this one here which will actually fit the drive pulley. This one comes off of Banggood as well and I'll put the link to it. It's a DC motor so I can actually put that onto the um, drive and make up um, different tools. Use that um, motor with um, like a variable speed unit and make up like I say deburring uh, machines you can make tool post drills up for on the lathe and all other different types of um, equipment and that's a very um, powerful DC motor it's a 12 to 36 volt so it's a good range of voltage you can use with it and you can actually get this excellent speed control unit to actually um, switch it on and drive it and these are really low cost units you have the um, on off switch there or the I think it's a forward and reverse actually the um, center there is off then forward and reverse you've got a little um, LED light there for when it's on and then you have the potentiometer for the variable speed and the connections are all made at the back here and it's 10 volts to 60 volt DC 6 amp and these excellent units are only about $10 to buy at the moment so I have some excellent projects lined up for all this equipment and I want to make um, a small deburring machine that's like a, um, a chuck assembly with the spindle and a motor with variable speed drive and you can actually um, put components into the chuck for actually deburring threads or whatever and it's actually a safe way to actually deburr things um, off of the lathe. 
And another excellent thing you can actually make with these is a simple tool post drill. If you've seen my video where I make my own tool post drill, this is a great alternative because you can actually put the assembly like that and screw this onto a piece of mild steel bar. You could actually just screw it nice and squarely onto a piece like that and then that would be held in the vise like that on the um, tool post for the lathe and use that as a tool post drill just like my one where you put a um, power drill on the back here to actually drive the um, spindle and you can wind the lathe in and do side drilling nice and square using one of those Plus, if you watch my videos on the tool post drills, you don't actually need to have the vise for the actual assembly. You can actually put a piece of long mild steel bar there, about 12 millimeter square, bolted onto the top there, and then held directly in the quick change tool post, like on the Myford or the Chinese mini lathe, and use the actual tool post drill like that and I am going to make a micro tool post drill using this one this is the 0-3 millimeter chuck and this one will be absolutely brilliant for that so this is the B12 chuck set the 1.5 to 10 millimeter chuck and these are the parts that you actually get with each set so the first thing that you have to do when you actually get one of these kits is to actually press the bearings into the aluminium housing. They're a very tight fit and you can use a bearing press or a vise, but whatever you do, do not use mallets or hammers or anything like that, otherwise you may damage the bearing or the end of the housing. And to actually press the bearings in, I haven't got a bearing press, so I use this little vise here. And I've made these two um, components up here out of Delrin, or you can use PVC bar. All it is is a piece of bar which is turned down so it loosely fits into the bearing bore like that. And it's about five or six millimeter thick, parted off, and then faced off the other end to take the pip off. So what you do is put the bearing onto one of those and I only push one bearing at a time. So I use the other disc on the other end of the housing and then put the bearing in like that and make sure that the discs go down equally on the um, actual jaws of the vise so when I actually do the vise up it will actually press that um, bearing in nice and square without any damage to the bearing or the housing. So if you saw the underside of the jaws of the vise it's got the same amount of um, Delrin or PVC sticking out from the uh, jaw and that ensures that when I do the vise up, it will actually push that bearing in nice and square. And you can see there that it takes quite a bit of force to actually push that bearing home. So that's one end done. and the lip of the bearing pushes up against the end face of the actual housing and then the disc can go in that one put the other bearing on the other end and then do the same on the vise Having those lugs going into the um, bore of the bearing is making it easy so that when I actually manoeuvre it about for position, 
in the vise they won't actually drop out and just make sure it's nice and square and then push that one home and that's the bearings successfully fitted to the housing without any damage so next I tap the um, chuck onto the um, taper there with a copper mallet or soft mallet and if you do that make sure that the bore is clean inside the chuck and the taper on the actual spindle put it onto the spindle taper like that and don't actually hit on the end of the jaws what you do is open the jaws fully so that those um, jaws go inside the actual chuck out of the way and then when you hit the end with the um, soft mallet it won't do any damage to the jaws so hold it like that and give it a few knocks and that one will be solid on the spindle and then the spindle can be pushed through the housing and I have actually found that the spindle is a very tight fit on those bearings so you have to push that in carefully and on one of them it was a little bit too tight so I actually just polished the end of the spindle a bit so that it could actually go into the bearing very slightly like that but you need to actually press it home or again put it like that hold it in your hand and if it is loose enough you can actually drive it through like that and that one's fitted and that is a really good fit on a unit like this and there won't be any uh, free play in there it's perfect for a spindle and then if you're going to use the drive assembly you can either put the um, pulley on that way or the other way but first put one of these little um, metal C-clips down over so that that one rests against the inner part of the um, bearing there and then when you put this one on it won't actually rub against the end of the um, bearing housing or the bearing um, outer diameter so you can actually hold that one in position and then tighten that up with the allen keys provided there's two grub screws and like I say you can have the pulley around the other way if you want to so that goes on there like that and mine did actually come with two of those um, C clips they're little spring clips and I don't actually see the need for the other one maybe it's just a spare you don't need one on the front because the end of the um, shaft there rests against the front of the bearing so that's okay and then you have this assembly here which pushes on the back end and lock that one up with the other sized allen key that you actually get in the kit like that and this one has a left-handed thread um, this one pushes on um, that way down over like that and locks on the um, actual flats on the side there so you can see the shape of that one goes on onto the actual flats and then this one faces inwards and is a left hand thread so you screw it on like that 
and then you can use both of these spanners in the kit or these wrenches to actually lock that one up and that one's for holding discs like grinding discs or cutting discs or something like that so you have the option of using a tool on this end and then like I said earlier you have the option of using a drive like this with the motors that you can actually get on eBay this one comes with the correct size spindle for the assembly like that and that's how you would make up a small machine tool you could actually use it for making homemade bench drills or whatever or the deburring machine that I'm going to show at a later date or like I say you can actually use a saw in this end here and make up a small bench saw and that would be good I think I'll make one of those at some point there are actually loads of different projects you could actually use or make using this um, kit is excellent value for money it's high quality it's a real good precision kit everything fits perfectly and it runs lovely and smoothly and I think it's a great piece of equipment to actually have and use to make different tools and I've just remembered you can actually use this collar here round the other way to actually trap the saws in between or the discs just like on an angle grinder so you can have it round that way to actually narrow the gap and trap the saw nice and tight or you can have it round the other way for say a grinding disc or whatever so that gives it great versatility for all different types of tools and just like on the angle grinder you use the two wrenches provided one on the flats there and one in the holes on the collar there to actually tighten that up and one other thing I'd just like to mention before I finish um, the actual chucks that come with this kit are made by Sanu and they're actually um, rated at ISO 14001 so they have really good quality control and they're excellent little chucks and I did say earlier that I'd actually show this as a tool post drill. I'm going to do this one in a later video so that I can keep the videos as short as possible.